Hello and welcome everybody. This is the very first meeting we have back in person. I know you all know that and we're excited to see you and be able to gather together. Thank you. I hope that we're gonna have a great meeting today. It's just really exciting to all be back in person. Okay, now we're on to oral communications. Geraldine Kessler, followed by... Okay, I'm just gonna show this little picture real quick. Don't start my three minutes. This is what I'm talking about, okay? <clears throat> I would like to speak today about the environmental nightmare staver housing project slated on Melba Road in Encinitas to put up 31 homes on 6.6 .6 acres, take down a grove of mature Torrey pines in addition to 173 other trees <coughs> and 30 other smaller trees and native shrubs <coughs> and demo a historical home built in 1938, all based on the density bonus lot <coughs> AB 2345. I recently learned that the city plans to remove all but one of the mature trees on Melba's tree line, which serves as a tree canopy for many years in the neighborhood, just to widen the road less than a foot and assist with overflow parking for the Staver project. We met with the city's traffic engineer and they have not been open to the options of traffic comings based on the neighbor's ideas. I've been listening to the traffic commission's meetings and I don't understand why you don't have more community participation with the residents. We are the one utilizing the streets, not a book smart engineer. One neighbor living on Melba had volunteered to donate part of his property on the south side of Melba in order to spare the trees. I have seen other major cities spare trees when developing new housing projects. We beg the city to preserve the Encinitas Red Woods and the tree canopy, which aligns with the current approved climate action plan. As, as we were scouring through the onslaught of public records we, of this nightmare housing project, we found Anton Van Amersfurst, an accomplished avocado grower named on the deed asking for an easement. He was living in the botanical gardens around the time the property was changing hands prior to Ruth and Charles Larrabee. Approximately one half of the property that is now known as San Diego Botanical Gardens was owned by Anton, an avocado grower who immigrated from the United States to the United States from Holland. We are still researching his relationship to the Melba property and why he was asking for the easement, but we think it's quite possible that he planted many trees in the area and that is, is currently on the Staver property and perhaps tied in with a historical home that's there. These facts have been exciting for the community who feels that they may have trees planted by him. And it also points out the historical value of the property for Encinitas. That is why I'm continuing to ask the city to assist the community with preservation of this small piece of land and assist with the acquisition for the Staver, from the Stavers Trust. Let us make it continuous with the Oakcrest Park and a, a possible annex for the botanical gardens and open space and use it for an outdoor STEM lab as for the surrounding schools. As I mentioned before, Brian is not watering the trees or the plants on the property. We believe that Brian is doing this so that he will not count them as a lie. I just want you to know his grandparents would be rolling over in their graves. The Stavers have historically been stewards of the land in Thank North County. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. We appreciate it. Okay. Next speaker is Natalie Satoon, followed by Ruben Flores, Arlen Iyengar, and then Trina Priest. 